welcome to the Archbishop House, the home of the British Institute of Professional Photography. Uh, today we're lucky enough to have Melanie East with us, who's an amazing newborn photography and also trainer. And we're going to be talking about her three favourite things, which are three favourite images. So, hello Melanie and welcome. How are you today? Hi Martin. Hi everybody. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Oh well, I tell you, it's the cleanest, tidiest room I've ever seen on any interview that we've ever done. <laughs> uh, I would say um, that, that, that you, you've got to be careful what you wear on your feet in that with that carpet, haven't you? In that so room. careful, so careful. I didn't think it through, really, did I? <laughs> it's beautiful, though. What a beautiful room. So we're going to be talking about your your three favourite images today. And just before we do that, I just want you to kind of give a, a little bit of a bio of what you do and how you do it and how you make you make your living. Uh, obviously, you I know you really well, and you're really well known in the industry. For maybe some of our members who have not been involved in newborn photography or uh, it's the first time meeting you. Can you just explain what you do and how you do it? Sure. Um, so clearly I'm Melanie East. Um, I used to be a lawyer um, and 15 years ago I made the decision to change um, from law to photography simply because I wanted a career that I could work around um, my child. I was pregnant at the time and decided I didn't want to, to stay um, managing people's uh, personal injury claims, clinical negligence claims and divorces, which is all very depressing. Um, so I thought we'll do something happy. Uh, so um, yeah, so I changed uh, to photography um, and, uh, and I've never looked back. Um, and I decided to become a newborn and baby photographer. I do shoot weddings as well. Um, but newborns and babies really because I felt it's the one time in uh, a, a life where you change so quickly. You know, within three weeks, a baby has changed in terms of, of what they look like, how big they are, even in terms of personality, you know, little personalities emerging. And so I felt newborn photography was, was the right thing um, for me. And back then, it wasn't really a, a big thing as it is now. I mean, now in the UK, it's, it's huge, but back then it wasn't. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, so I, I've, I've loved it. Um, I still love it. And I, I've never looked back. Um, I also, so, so I basically I work from home. I have, I used to have commercial premises um, in a little village uh, where I live in the Chew Valley, so a little place called Chew Magna. Um, but the landlord decided to knock uh, the building down and, and build a house, which uh, I don't really blame him for because it's prime land. Um, but um, then I looked at where my work came from and realized actually it wasn't walk bys, it was simply a huge amount of it was word of mouth. Yeah. So I felt actually, why don't I just um, save the rent? Um, and so we built, we moved, we bought a farmhouse and we, we built within the grounds of it. Um, so I, I have a studio, which is, which is great from home. Um, and in there, I also teach newborn photographers and photographers who want to, who maybe might be wedding photographers and want to learn the art of newborn photography, um, or even people new to the industry, you know, or seasoned professionals, um, workshops and one-to-ones, and it's a great little space. And, and I think it's really important, um, and I know it's kind of the name of your training as well, but the art of newborn photography, because it, it, it really is an art on, on two fronts. First, the art of, I, I've seen you do it live. I've, I've been to one of your seminars and seen how you can, uh, I don't want to say manipulate, because that's about the wrong word, but contr control is probably not the right word, but to put a baby um, at ease and, and, and kind of get them to uh, sleep and, and, and get them so that you can photograph them is the first part of the art. But I think the other kind of, art to it is as well and I know you're very very kind of um, uh, up on this and very you know it's at the height of your your thoughts is, is newborn safety as well when when people are photographing newborn and I know that you're one of the probably if not the the world but certainly not in the UK one of the leading experts on uh, photo, how to photograph babies um, uh, uh, safely so maybe you could talk a little bit about kind of uh, how that's come about and and, and uh, why that's formed such an important part of your training. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, safety is, is a big value of mine um, in terms of my photography business, but also in terms of how I teach other photographers. Um, and I think really probably the main part of that is my previous career as a lawyer um, means that I'm not about to put myself into any situation where I'm about to be sued. Um, but also um, I, you know, these babies, they're somebody's baby. They are a miracle. They are a fragile being. They're not mini humans. No. They're structurally different. Yes. Um, and, and I think that 
really for me it's 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 two parts it's a I, I don't want to be sued um b i think if you're not being safe then you're not perhaps not being professional and you'd want to sort of maybe get some training or even think about why you're why you're doing things a certain way um but also for me it, it's the fact that i know that when amelia my daughter was a baby mothers and fathers too tend to have a sort of a tiger instinct mm -hmm. so when somebody is has your baby um and is holding your baby you know it's like a, a mother watching everything you're doing and and you do the baby cries then the natural instinct of a mother is to want that baby back yes. and to think what, what are you doing what's happened what have you done yes and and so I don't ever want a mother to feel that way in my studio. Um, you know, I, I want them to feel happy, content, and safe in the knowledge that this baby is being posed in the safest possible manner. Mm -hmm. So that she, the mother enjoys the session, isn't sitting there worried, because remember, it all forms part of an experience. And if you're wanting to sell photography, how you feel at that session, yeah. not just in terms of how you feel and what the baby looks like, but also how did you feel as, as the parent? Was it a stressful situation where you were worried about your baby? Mm -hmm. Or were you able to sit there and, and have a cup of coffee and watch on in delight and relaxation, knowing that your baby's in the safest of hands? And, I, and also, you've, you've kind of taken it one stage further than that, that I think I've listened to one of your podcasts. It might have even been with Paul Wilkinson, or uh, certainly I, I remember listening to it and thinking, that's incredible that you've gone to the trouble and, and done some work with a paediatrician as well to, to talk about, you know, what, what a baby's body can and should be kind of uh, positions that it should be put in and what's safe and what's not safe. And that, that really is, uh, you know, and, and that's why I'm so passionate that, you know with, with your courses and i think in the future hopefully we're going to do something together or certainly have some kind of sit, um, or, or uh, help with uh, people who want to get qualified in baby photography that they they do it in the right and safe way and go through the correct training I, I think i do think that's really important and, I, and everything that i that i say about newborn safety it, this isn't me making it up i mean i would hate for people to think oh god you know what does she know she's just a photographer but actually i back everything up i i, I make sure i do the research so i have i, I work very closely with a, um, a consultant pediatrician in emergency medicine um you know what is safe what isn't safe why isn't this safe you yeah. know actually are some of these poses could they be storing up problems for babies when they grow up into, into toddlers yes. um and you know and, and there's so much to take on board and you know things such as perhaps over wrapping a baby wrapping a baby too tightly the froggy pose mm -hmm. um, the, the potato sack why you want your baby to like potatoes another matter but you know um all those things um you know, I've, I've done the research, I work really closely with him so that I know what I'm, I'm doing. So therefore, delegates that are taught by me know that this isn't Melanie making it up because Melanie doesn't like that pose. Actually, this is, this is medical, um, medically backed up information. And I think the more that photographers educate themselves yeah. um, in terms of, yes, of course, in terms of lighting and, and, and art and all of that, but also when you're dealing with newborn babies, the safety element should be the very first thing um, that you yeah. learn. And yeah. it's actually, as I say, I've seen you handle a baby. It's a, it's a dark art. I'm sure every uh, new mother would love <laughs> for you to be able to come around and show them just how to, to, to put a baby back down. It's, uh, it's, it's something to see. It really is. It's, it's quite. I think it's, yeah, I think it's you know it's it's people say, oh, you do you have to be a mother or a parent to be a successful newborn photographer? And I'll say, no, you don't. You really don't. Of course not. But but you do need to be in tune with the parents. You need to be in tune with the baby. Yeah. Um, and and there's so many. There are I should say from the outset, there's in a lot of very safe newborn photographers. Huge yeah. amounts of safe ones. But there's also photographers that could perhaps maybe take another look at how they're doing things and why they're doing things. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, and, and yeah, I think, you know, being in tune with the parent and how they're feeling, um, an interesting point when I taught in, in Italy, um, at Graphic Studios, Gorgeous yeah. Castle, which they're very kind to, to let me have, um, they, I can't speak Italian. And of course, when we have the babies that come, they're, they're, the mothers are Italian and I can say yeah. ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Chocho, which I think is dummy. I think I learned that from Francesca. Um, but that's all the Italian I can say. Yeah. So therefore it's very important that the, the mothers, the parents are, because we have no dialogue, that they are able to feel through everything that I'm doing 
that their baby is safe. Body language. And a body language and particularly Italians they're not they don't necessarily like traveling with their babies um, mm -hmm. in the early stages and so they're putting a massive amount of trust in me yeah. um, to, 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 to think actually I'm going to hand my baby that might be just seven days old over to this photographer who I've never met can't can't speak have no dialogue can't ask her what she's doing you yeah. know, it's a body language and, and, and your whole manner. Again, I think it's really, really important. No, and am I remembering correctly that you had twins? Was that at the Yes, the yes. Oh, that's amazing. I remember these the images are incredible. Yeah. Yeah, we were very lucky, blessed with twins on the last workshop. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, well, let's, see, let's have a look at some of your beautiful images then. So these are, I asked you to pick three of your favourite images. And I'm going to just share my screen so we can all see them. So just give me one second. Uh, okay. And choose that one. There we go. So, if you want to let us know, Melanie, what uh, this has been one of your favourite images and why? Sure. Um, I, I love this picture um, because it's the sweetest baby, Italian baby. I think this was workshop number two or three um, in Italy. Oh, wow. um, and you can see beautiful Italian baby with the most beautiful olive -ish skin and dark hair. I mean, when this baby came into the room, I was, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. All babies are beautiful, but Italian babies, wow. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to teach my delegates that actually, um, first and foremost, safety, um, but secondly, um, you don't have to be using a lot of fussy props. Um, and, and actually, um, this setup is just wool. That's all it is. It's just material. Um, baby is uh, on a very thick padded surface. Um, he's wrapped um, and the wrapping has taken place really, really carefully because again, going back to the whole safety element, when you wrap babies, you do have to be very, very careful that you're not obstructing any airways. And that means, you know, making sure that the, the arms aren't over the chest and wrapped too tightly, but also that the wrap isn't too tight uh, around the neck. Um, and you can see that that wrap, you have space, you can see the space on the right hand side there. Mm -hmm. um, and also when you place the baby down, I've made sure that the chin is up so it's not slumped down and therefore it's not obstructing an airway. So again, there's a lot to think about when you're, you're, you're posing a, a baby even on their back. Um, and I wanted to create something that was just artistic and neutral with the emphasis on the baby. So I didn't want any fuss at all. Um, and, and this is what I created. Um, and it took, it took quite a, a long time to do. Um, I had previously sketched it out, so I had an idea of what I was going to do. I do tend to sketch out my things in advance so that I, I have an idea of what I want to create. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's neutral. Um, it's, it's, I wanted baby, the whole thing for me for baby photography is that baby looks safe, that they are safe, that they look safe, they look cocooned and they look nurtured. Yes. And this image to me has all of those things. The, the, the wool that I've used um, to create the, um, the shape around the baby is the softest merino silk wool. It's beautiful. Um, very, very soft. The shape is a lovely, delicate shape. And the baby is cocooned and safe and warm. And when you think of newborn babies, that's what you want them to be. Yeah. Um, uh, it actually uh, reminds me of a flower or a petal. I don't know if that's the kind of look you were going for. But, uh, interestingly, it, it, well, I had to be a little bit careful because I was a baby boy, so I didn't want it to be too floral. So some yeah. of my stuff is, is very floral. Um, but I thought, actually, I, I just will. I'll make something very slightly for floral shape that gives yeah. a bit of interest. Um, I've done some work that is literally just, you know, so you, you don't have the um, almost you might describe them as the petal bits, um, where, so, you know, some of the work, if I'm doing a dark brown or something like that, I might not, not do that, but, but I wanted a bit of interest in this. Um, and so it does have a, a, a slight floral look to it. Um, I just wanted it to be delicate. And, and it is, and, and to be fair, I think it's this one that I've actually seen, going back to my days at Graph Studio, was a Canvas Pro mm -hmm. that we, we had yes. in the sample. And it was the Canvas Pro, uh, uh, Pro being slightly soft as well, the actual canvas itself. 
Yeah. I remember it being an app. It was one of my favourites that I used to show when we were at shows. It was beautiful. Yeah, I, I have this image on the Canvas Pro here. Um, uh, and it is, it, it, it suits the Canvas Pro absolutely brilliantly. And the Canvas Pro is an incredible product yeah. um, from Graphy, obviously. But it's, um, it's uh, this image in particular, as you say, because the, the Canvas Pro has that beautiful softness, um, about it, the images are beautifully crisp, but you know what I mean. Until you've seen yeah. one and yeah, felt yeah, one, yeah, 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 you can't absolutely. really appreciate it. But um, but yes, this image suited that really, really well. And when it, it came on a Canvas Pro, I was like, wow, yeah, that's that's the right decision for that. It, it beautiful, looked, yeah. absolutely beautiful. And the lighting and everything is incredible. So we're going to move on to your uh, your second uh, uh, selection. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you smiled wow. at just the right time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, again, this, this image was one created in my studio. Um, I wasn't teaching at the time, this is for a client. Um, this was, I talked to my clients um, about, you know, what, what, they, what they're looking for. What, what, what is it that they are wanting me to create? And what can I create for them? Um, and we wanted to create, a, again, a piece of art. Um, we... When I look at when I when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, I knew it was going to be a baby boy, and I thought we'll do some talk to the client, we'll do some lovely browns and beautiful rich tones. Um, and we again it goes back to safety, being cocooned, protected. So you'll see that this little one here has almost wing shape around. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that signifies to me protection, but also the ability that this baby will fly high and it might, you know, what, you know, the world is its oyster really, yeah. um, in, into what it, into what this baby grows as a child and then an adult and, you know, the possibilities of what this baby could do, like any human when they're born, hopefully are endless. And so it has a storytelling element to it. Um, and again, it, it goes back to the, 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 you'll see with, with my work that I don't use a lot of different colors in my images. The mm -hmm. color palettes tend to be um, very complementary, yes. and um, the tones always work very well together. And I could have introduced another color into this, could have introduced probably a, a beautiful deep green or something, but I felt no, and I did actually try that at, at the point and brought some green into it. I thought no, because it takes the focus from the baby. So again, when my eye goes to this, looks at this shot, it's straight to the face first. And that's what I want with my newborn photographer. I want that you're looking straight at the baby and everything else complements, which is why I don't use a lot of props. I used to, when I first started out, I had so many props like any newborn photographer, you become a bit of a proper holic. Um, <laughs> but I, I tend not to, to do that now, simply because this is now my style of work and this is why, this is what I'm booked for. This is yeah. what my clients come to me for. Um, and so, and I love this image because he smiled at just the right time. Um, and all newborn photographers out there will know that we love it when we get a little bit of um, a smile coming through from a baby. Um, but yes, again, you'll, you'll see that the theme with my images is safety. Again, this baby is on his back. Um, he's cocooned, he is safe. He's not too hot, not too cold. He's um, happy, <laughs> could be wind. <laughs> um, and again, you'll see that really importantly that that chin is up, it's not slumped down. Yeah. So slumped down against the chest, you're potentially blocking a bit of an airway, obstructing an airway. So again, it's very important to ensure that that doesn't happen. Um, I, I actually see with this one as well, you, you're right, the, the wings, you almost like wings, and it's almost a nest, isn't it? It's like a, a yes. small baby bird is what kind of spots my mind. Baby bird, yeah. yeah, so it's a little fledgling, um, you know, um, a little baby bird, baby birds, of course, they're vulnerable, so there's a vulnerability there as well, yeah. um, because of course newborns are vulnerable. Um, so I think, you know, thinking of when you're when you're photographing newborns and thinking about what you're going to create for your clients, you know, what does newborn photography mean to you? I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an important question to ask yourself. And, and how do you, um, I teach a lot of photographers on how to stand out because yes. there are so many newborn photographers now. It's a hugely saturated market out there. Um, and being able to stand out now more important than ever, it's more important than ever, I think. And um, it's true to say as well, Melanie, you're right. It, it is kind of, there's more and more newborns, but. I think it's a real skill to do it right. There's a lot of awful, uh, really a lot of awful uh, newborn photographers, and yeah. I can say that because I know you probably can't, but uh, you know, we, we, some of the work I have seen is, it's just not, 
it's just not beautiful. It's just, you know, it, it, you can tell that the baby's uncomfortable or, yeah. you know, they, I, I, they, they over, as you say, they, sometimes they can overkill it with props and it uh, becomes about the props rather than, as you say, the, you know, you're still looking for um, emotion or like this baby's uh, first beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, so these little sweetie, and I think, you know, I think a lot of, um, also I, I do see that photographers who are not newborn photographers, they might be wedding photographers, or they might be uh, headshot photographers, or whatever, and then suddenly they're asked to photograph a newborn baby, and they don't necessarily want to turn the work away, yeah. uh, so they'll do it, but they don't necessarily, and I'm not speaking for all out there, let me make that clear, but they don't necessarily know how to do it safely yes um, and so babies can end up looking uncomfortable and perhaps being uncomfortable yeah. um and, and i know that that isn't the photographer's intention but I, I think you know if you're going to do or thinking of adding newborn photography to your business then you need to learn how to do it absolutely one 100 percent yeah. agree with you absolutely yeah. uh, paramount if anything cool brilliant lovely beautiful image and your third favorite image this one um i nearly sent you the color but i i you know what i really preferred the black and white um and i don't know if you can see on your screens out there on my screen that i can definitely see detail in the shadow <laughs> but i don't yeah. know if you guys depending on you know whether you want to calibrate it, but you can or not but i would say um so again this goes back it, it's always goes back to the same three things for fear of repeating myself so it's safety it's um, nurturing it's being cocooned and, and this I wanted to be almost a little bit more fetal um, so that it was a little bit more womb like yes but I wanted the baby's face to be pointing to camera yes um, so that we could see that baby is is comfortable um, and it isn't frowning and all, and all that sort of thing because I think baby expression sometimes you can get a lot away when a baby's frowning perhaps they're not in the deepest most peaceful sleep although some babies do frown in their sleep um, and so and again this was created for a client um, and we wanted to signify love and protection hence um, the, the the heart within the nest it's like. really, really clever, isn't it? Because you're right, it, it, it does like in, in the fifth position and could be in the womb, but at the same time, the shape of the heart and everything, it's, there's so much going on in it. It really is an such an interesting image. Thank you. It's, and again, it's, it's, this is literally made out of wool mm -hmm. um, and felt. There's, there's no big prop here. Um, but yes, I've made, obviously, um, there's a, a little woolen nest that I've made to, to, for the baby to be in. Um, and then I had created the, the heart shape around the baby. Um, and, and there is a little bit of um, post-production that obviously goes, goes into that. You can't get those, those heart straight, those heart shapes immediately absolutely correct. Initially, you've got to, you know, get rid of the stray wool and all that kind of thing that, that might be around. Um, but yes, and again, I wanted, the, I wanted the, the, the eye to look straight to the baby and then everything else becomes secondary. So it, it is a... The storytelling image um, but you can see that it's baby's very young obviously um, it, it's very safely posed um, and, and this baby was it was I remember this baby being an absolute dream because he was so 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 sleepy um, and you know again I haven't I, I wanted it to still look reasonably natural so I didn't want this image to look too contrived obviously it's contrived because I put the baby there but what I mean is I wanted the baby to still look very relaxed um and, and I think that you know baby does it's not too um too it's posed but it's not overly overly posed if that makes sense uh, yeah. it, as in baby still looks pretty relaxed yeah I think so absolutely yeah it could be yeah. that, that could be how I mean, that's the kind of uh, position they're in in the womb, isn't it? That's yes, kind of... it, yes, it can be. And, and, and again, that's what I, what I wanted to signify. And, and things like, you know, asking parents, you know, how did they have... The, the image of the twins that I remember doing in Italy, um, I asked the parents, uh, where I got Jeremy or even Francesca to ask, and Jeremy with his translate app, <laughs> to ask, how did the babies have their hands? Who was on which side of the womb? So that when we are creating the image, you're creating something that's very meaningful to the parents. So, and I remember one of the, the, and the mother saying, oh, well, the, um, the girl twin had her hand up by her head. So I made sure that when I posed the twins, that baby had her hand up by her head. So that it means something to, to the parents. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I think 
just talking to your clients about that kind of thing is really important. Um, but yes, I, I do love this image, particularly in the black and white. I absolutely love it as a black and white. Um, it, it, it's one of my favourites, um, just because of all that it signifies. And also because I remember this baby being an absolute sweetheart and making my, this particular job very, a very easy one. <laughs> I'm sure you get some difficult babies as well. Um, yeah, they're not always as straightforward. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, so we were talking about something that inspires you. You said you want to talk a bit further about this image, uh, about inspiration and uh, what, how 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 you get that. And yeah, I I um, this is one of those the images, one of the first images where I saw myself take um, a a leap away from. Um, lots of props so I mean I was you know I was like all newborn photographers lots of newborn photographers doing it in baby in a crate baby on a box baby in a box baby you know everything I could think of baby went in it and I thought to myself and this is not um this is not a reflection on other newborn photographers out there at all but to me I thought what am I doing actually because you know babies actually why don't I just create something that is simple the only prop is material because material is still a prop but let's pair it right back down uh -huh. um and and i thought and, and that's one this is one of the first images that i did doing that and and once i i created it um and i remember thinking being slightly nervous when i was doing it because it was the first one of the first images that i did like this but teaching at the same time uh -huh. and thinking actually i'm going to be a little bit brave here and i'm going to teach this while creating it having not actually done it before yeah. like this um and great it worked <laughs> um but but you know um i and i thought and once i'd, I'd done that i looked at the image and i thought you know i i love this and this really this image really was my inspiration for all the other images that i now create because it gave me almost the permission to think actually i don't need i, I don't want to follow what all the other newborn photographers do they're all producing most photographers are producing very beautiful work. And so this isn't to say that I don't like bean, newborns on a bean bag. I think they can look absolutely beautiful when they're done nicely, and yeah. most of them are. Um, it's not to say I don't like babies in props. I do. But for me, I, I needed, I thought, no, it's time. I could see the industry shifting a bit. Mm -hmm. And I thought, actually, there's a lot of newborn photographers out there, and I, I want to differentiate my work. Um, and actually having created this, I thought, I love this. I really love it. So this is how I'm going to carry on. Isn't it really interesting, first of all, that this was taken on a, uh, when you were training, but secondly, that a one image can, can change the direction of your, your brand and your style because uh, that, that, that has affected the way that you've shot since, since shooting this, hasn't it? It really has. Yeah, it has. And a lot of my work now are babies just on their back. I mean, if a client particularly um, asks me for a forward facing baby in this kind of position with head on hands or head on arms like that, I'll, I'll do it for them, um, of course. But, but I tend not to get booked for that because they don't really show it as a large part of my portfolio. There is one on my website like that. But I generally, this is the kind of imagery that I'm known for now. Um, and this, these are the reasons that my client books me. Now, if a client wanted um, very prop style images, they wouldn't come to me because I don't show that work on my website no. generally. And, and I, I think it's very important that photographers, um, they shoot what, obviously what their client wants, but really they, they should be authentic and shoot what, what's meaningful to you. Because I think when you're creating images that, um, that you love to do and that are meaningful to you and meaningful mm -hmm. to your client, then a, you'll sell them very easily indeed, um, but B, you're, you're not going to get bored. Yeah, I, I think the other thing to, to say about the three images that you've shown here today is that they could probably go in, obviously the newborn category, uh, say in competition or in qualification, but I actually think they're also fine art images as well. They, they really kind of cross that kind of newborn line into fine art uh, and, and could be seen in, yeah, in I, I, I think I, I think they may well just just cross into that yeah. um I, I don't I don't tend to enter a lot of competitions actually I didn't really enter them at all um Keep making money Melanie that's what it is yeah, I just, um, it's not something, I mean, I, I did want to, I think I did want to just check that I can actually, that these images, you know, some images can actually receive some awards and, and you know, and, and they did, which I thought, right, that's great. I didn't need to keep doing it. But, but that said, 
I do feel that it's important for photographers to um, to enter awards to grow. Um, you know, I, I do think that's really important. Um, you know, for me, if I have time, I'll enter awards, I'll enter photographs into awards, but, but generally I, I tend to be one of these people that at the last minute think, oh, there's awards, <laughs> and then too late really to think about what I would put in. Um, but, um, but I do think that awards are very important to, um, to, to, to grow and, and to, to receive feedback and, um, and all of those things, you know, really, really help you uh, progress as a photographer, certainly. Melanie, absolutely beautiful, beautiful images. So we've got a couple of minutes left and what I've been doing with all the people I've spoken to and I've been doing our three favourite things is, uh, obviously we're, we're all in the same boat. We're, I think we're in, I'm not even sure if it's week seven or week eight of lockdown, somewhere around there. Um, and just what advice you would give to other members, you're, you're, you're very successful at what you do and obviously you are in the same boat as everybody else. Uh, it doesn't matter on people's success or not success, but you know, what are you doing with your time and what, what, what suggestions can you give to our members kind of to be ready for, for the end of lockdown and, and how you see that going? I know that before we started filming that you felt that newborn photography would be affected longer than other types of photography just because of social distancing. And I guess until we get a vaccine is, is, is probably uh, what you're waiting for really for people to say, you know, that, that there's vaccinations in progress. So what's your take on the next few weeks? Yeah, I, I think, firstly, I'd like to be absolutely right. Um, people's success makes no difference to something like a lockdown. Um, mm. We're all in the same boat. I can't shoot, so therefore I'm not earning any money. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe in sitting here and saying, oh, I'm so successful, I'm earning all this money, because it's blatantly, it's just not true. And I believe in honesty. That's one of the yeah. things about me, I'm very honest. Um, and I, um, so I... The, the newborn photographers, I think it's going to be very difficult. I am, um, you know, I, because of the social distancing measures that are likely still to be put in place, even if it's a metre away um, and they reduce it from two metres, as a newborn photographer, you can't be a metre away from the baby um, because you, um, you, you're posing a baby. Yes. By the nature, you're touching them. Have to. There's, there's no other way to do there's it. There's no other way around it, really. Um, you could do lifestyle sessions. You could offer lifestyle sessions in people's homes if they were happy for that when you're allowed to go into people's homes, that is, as long as you socially distanced. And that would be very much lifestyle. So you don't touch the baby at all. Um, and you shoot on, a, on a, a long lens. And that, of course, depends on how big people's houses are and so forth. Um, but for me, I don't intend to be doing any newborn photography until, until the world is in a safer place um, because as you know safety is my value and I run an authentic business and I'm not about to put myself or my clients in a position where I feel there there may be a risk there yes. um, so so I've had to think well I'm a photographer have camera can shoot just can't do babies at the moment <laughs> and I think that as photographers you have to think out of the box well what else can you do and for me well I, I'm a wedding photographer okay can't shoot weddings at the moment either but when um, lockdown is finished um, and when even with the two metre distancing, when people are allowed out in parks and all that kind of thing, you can offer location sessions. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Um, and so what I'm working on at the moment, and I'm not talking baby location sessions, I'm talking family sessions. I mean, there's all sorts of things. If you think, um, well, Mother's Day, did you miss out on Mother's Day portraits? Well, of course they did, because we were all in lockdown on Mother's Day. Father's Day is coming up, you could promote that. You can promote um, people who are about to get exam results or, or whatever, or going to university, or there's all sorts of things that you can be doing and promoting. So what I'm working on at the moment is the back end of my business and making sure that all my marketing is ready to go. So all I have to do is click a button or click, click publish on Facebook or Instagram or my website or whatever, and it's all there. So I, what I would say to photographers is, it's really, it is hard. It's hard um, mentally as well, because we're used to shooting. We're not used to spending all day, every day in front of our computers. Yes. I'm not. I'm, I'm shooting a lot of the time, and that's yes. not happening now. And so I've now got a bad back because I've got the wrong chair <laughs> for working at my computer so long. Um, but I would say work on your marketing. I'm sure all photographers are saying the same thing that, that teach and have done these videos. Work on your marketing. Work on what makes you different. Why should people choose you? What is your why? Why do you do what you do? Because Otherwise, what happens is when you look at websites, and particularly newborn photographers, you're all saying the same thing. Yeah. And actually, what is it about you that makes you different? Yes. Um, 
So all of that kind of stuff. Um, think about, you know, what other, what other things you could be doing. I've seen photographers um, branching into headshot photography, um, all that kind of thing. There's all sorts of things. If you've got yeah, a camera... I and you think can... people forget, and it's important, as, as you uh, right, they say, you do weddings as well, but probably now I'm best as a newborn photography, but you're a photographer first and specialise in a... In a, in a genre of photography, it, you know, the, 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 the rules still apply and the creativeness is still there. So there's, there's no reason why, you, you know, you couldn't go out and shoot a commercial job or a... Or exactly. A I think what I would say to people is at the moment, you know, I think the main thing is to keep an income stream open. And if that means that you need to go and do some location work or you need to do some headshots or you need to do whatever it is that you do food photography, if you're good at that, don't go out there. I mean, I could never become a food photographer. I know nothing about food photography so I'm not about to go out there and start photographing commercial shoots of food I'd be a disaster and Giles who's a very successful food photographer would laugh at me so I definitely wouldn't do that um, but um, I um, but I think yes you can adapt just it's all about adapting and, and, and doing what what you're skilled at doing and you'll be amazed at actually you know you'll actually discover things that perhaps you actually oh, really enjoy doing this you know I, I, I love being out in the great outdoors and, and, and shooting outdoors I forgot how much I loved it so all of those things but the main thing is don't leave it don't leave the marketing too late but it's a fine line so I'm not marketing now if I, the marketing that I'm doing now is very soft, soft marketing. Yeah. So I've put, um, for weddings, for example, I've put a, um, a video out, but it doesn't say book now. It says, I'm waiting patiently. Yes. And when the time is right, I'll be back photographing your weddings and it's got some wedding pictures. That's it. It doesn't say book now. It's none of that no. because I don't think we're ready. I don't think the world is ready for that. And I think you have to be very careful that your brand is not damaged. You have to be seen to be doing the right things. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you only have to look at some of the, the clothing websites. I think it was, um, I can't remember the brand, but it's a well-known clothing website. You've got an absolute roasting on Facebook in the comments because they've put a sale up and everyone's like, oh, I haven't got any money. I want to have irresponsible and they all went bananas. And that's the last thing you want on your Facebook page. Yeah. So it's softly, softly. It's funny, isn't it? My uh, my brother's the um, studio manager at Boohoo, uh, which are a clothing online company. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm sure your daughter will be, but um, yeah. they're actually having the you know they're, they're actually booking the trend. They're, 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 they're literally turning over an absolute fortune, and their, their sales have increased because of Zoom. Believe it or not, they've yeah. gone from the summer clothing that they would normally be selling to um, hoodies and tops for because people have having Zoom meetings. But yes, it's, it's the roof. It's, uh, but yeah, it's all, all, the, all there to be done. It's clever, and, and I think it's, it's again, it's, it's how you do it. So there's no point advertising spring summer clothing now. No. You know, you want the people want coziness. You know exactly. So that's very clever. It's how you do it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Melanie, that's been wonderful. I can't tell you how much we've enjoyed it. It's uh, always a pleasure to speak to you and uh, your knowledge. And as I say, for, for people interested in getting involved in newborn photography, then safety is always, always the first thing. And, and know that uh, if you want to learn from the best, then to get in contact with you. Thank you so much, Martin. It's been a pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you, Thank you Melanie.